What's up, drumming friends? I'm Jay Sennett. I want to take a look at drumming great Steve Gadd and show you a couple of some of his signature licks. I've always been a, a fan of his drumming, man. He's a magnificent drumming musician. He's, he's the complete musician. And there are so many things I, I, I respect and admire about his playing. First and foremost, his ability to play time. Um, Someone, a drummer that can play great time impresses me more than a drummer, drummer that can play a lot of things technically. Because to me, that's the number one responsibility for what we do on this instrument. And Gad's ability to play time is just extraordinary. And the feel that he brings to what he plays, on point, just on point. Fabulous time and great feel. Uh, other things would be like, he has a unique ability to come up with the right drum part for the song he's playing. Just, and, and that's where you get into, that's where it transcends learning a lick and trying to figure out where you can fit in a lick, right? He thinks conceptually and he lets the song tell him what to play at the kit. And he comes up, he orchestrates his drum parts with, with the music and some of my favorite Steve Gadd recordings, the period in the mid-70s when he was working with Chick Corea. His drumming during that period is just astonishing. I mean, really, it's remarkable drumming. Of course, there was remarkable writing from Chick Corea, and a lot of you may not know that Chick is also a fantastic drummer. And that's why so many drummers love working with Chick Corea, because the music is so rhythmically strong and interesting. Um, complicated. It's very complex, but... Uh, what Steve brought to that music was incredible, man. And, and he's also, his versatility is also, you know, very impressive to me. Um, I want to show you a couple of signature Steve Gadd licks. Here I am talking about licks now. But just, just keep in mind, a lick is a lick. That's what it is. You, you learn these things, to when we're, particularly when we're first learning. We, we emulate and we learn and we take things from other musicians but we're going to have to find a way to make those ideas our ideas. You know, how we shape, reshape them, or refine them, add to them, take away, so forth. But the fundamental idea, I'm going to show you a couple of signature Steve Gatt licks. When I first heard him do this, which was on the Leprechaun CD, actually, I uh, can't remember which song. I think it might have been Leprechaun Part 2, but it, I could be wrong on that. And it's not the straight ahead jazz thing. It's it's more of a it's a type of groove thing. When I first heard him do it, I thought, well, maybe he's doing this double stroke roll, right? But then I saw him a, a, a couple of times, and he was he was doing these 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 things, but they were single stroke rolls. And then when I started playing them, it just had such a better momentum leading up to the snare attack. And I'm going to show you two different ones, one based on the five-stroke single-stroke roll and the nine-stroke single-stroke roll. The five-stroke will put your snare hit, your anticipated snare hit, on the uh of, of the 16th note of beat one, one E and right? And the, the lick, the, the groove, would sound and feel something like this. Uh, two, three. But Steve does it more between his hi-hat and his snare drum. So his, his snare drum in his left hand kind of, those, those little subtle grace notes kind of act, that's what they act like. They act like these, these very subtle grace notes. Three, four. So I love it when he does it between the hi-hat and the snare drum. So that five stroke puts, you, puts the snare anticipated snare hit on the 16th on the one E and up. Uh. Now there's the nine stroke. 
and the nine stroke would sound something like this. Three, four. Which would put your snare hit, your anticipated snare hit, on the two E. The E of two. One E and a. Two E and a. I'll do quarter note bass drum so you can feel it. Three, four. Signature gad. And another thing he does, he gets off the hi hat with the right hand, goes to the ride cymbal, and the left hand stays on the hi hat until the snare hit. So with the five stroke, it would sound like this three, four. <laughs> Try the nine stroke on the rod symbol. See that? They have a nice momentum and they have a nice setup for the snare beat. Ah, love that. Right? And it has to be played loose and in time. And you start slow. or the nine and then there are little subtle things that you can do to enhance it like open and close the hi-hat in some spots <laughs> And then you can break up the rhythms with your right hand or do different things on the bass drum. Um, several different ways you can take that. But that's, that's the core of the idea, the fundamental idea. So the five stroke single stroke roll and the nine stroke single stroke roll. Some definitive signature Steve Gadd grooves. <laughs> And he mixes it up. Steve Gadd, the legendary drummer, one of the most recorded drummers in history. And if you've never heard his work with Chick Corea, I would highly recommend The Leprechaun, uh, Friends, uh, and Three Quartets. Three Quartets is definitely more straight ahead jazz. Friends, there's some groove things on there, but amazing, just remarkable, original drumming from Steve Gadd and The Leprechaun. Masterpiece, truly a masterpiece. So, 
Hope you uh, enjoyed my little uh, study of some of the ideas of drumming. Great Steve Gayette. Appreciate you watching. I'm Jay Sennett, and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you.